see, let me tell you something. Once I saw withdraw, I just saw red. <laughs> hey, guys. Me, in my head, I've started decorating that house. <laughs> I've started putting furniture. <laughs> the furniture that I've not bought. I started arranging it. So, it was the first shocker that we had. And we Hi, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Essay. And today, I'm going to be sharing you guys the story of how we lost out on buying our house as first-time buyers in the UK. And also sharing some of the lessons that we learned along the way. So, if this is a topic that you're interested in, definitely keep watching. So, I'm going to go back to when I first moved into this country. Um, I came into this country in 2018, 2019. And I remember there was one day I was going to work, right? And on the bus, I saw this huge banner on a very nice high rise building that says, you can own this property for just 5% deposit. And I think the house was going for around 250K, 300K. like. That was back then, not now. The prices, you can't even find the house for 250, 350k, like a new build, right? So when I saw it, me, as a sharp girl, I just basically put the amount in my calculator. I was like, okay, if I get a house of 400k, so all I just need is 20k. Guys, that was how I started subconsciously saving for this 20k. I kid you not. Like, I just had it at the back of my mind that okay, in order for me to buy a house in this UK, maybe the prices are this range, and if I can just save up five percent deposits, then when the time comes, I'll be able to buy. First of all, this is the first thing I learned. Fact check everything that people tell you. I don't know who told me this, but I'm pretty sure someone told me this that if you are an immigrant, you can't buy a house until you get your um, indefinite leave to stay in the UK last your ILR. And so because of that, that sort of like made me relax a bit. I was like, okay, I have five years because to get ILR, you need to have lived, here for, lived in the UK for five years. I was like, okay, I need to have five years to save this 20K, okay? So again, this is one big tip I'll give you is start doing your research now. Even if you're not planning to buy a house tomorrow or then in the next one year like now is a good time to start planning now is a good time to watch videos like this so you know what to expect when the time comes and you're ready for it you know how much you need to save you need to there's so many things that went i won't say it went wrong but we learned along the way as we we're trying to buy the house and in a way i feel like somehow it contributed to us losing the house eventually so i really really loved my warm bed you guys should check out the house tour i really loved it that was like the highlight of me being single i just loved having my own space the warm bed and all of that and that sadly was going to come to an end very soon because before i even rented this house the lady actually told me that she was in the process of selling and, and then she messaged me out of the blue i think like december period and she said hey essay i'm actively going to start getting people to the house to view it people are showing interest and most likely i'm giving you like a two three months notice that you would have to leave this house and then that's when myself and obi actually started the conversation um mind you at this time we're not married but we just started talking and i was like oh i'm looking for a new place and all of that and he was like okay how about he buys and then i rent from him and that's basically the genesis of the story and then i was like okay cool that makes sense let's go and look for things so because i was really tied to enjoying that like because i really liked that space i wanted us to find a house around that area now there's nothing wrong with this and i think it's really really good if you live in an area and you really like that area the area works for you it's affordable i think that's the best place to buy because when you start moving out you really don't know what those places are going to be like you again if you're living in a place I'm, I'm i'm guessing you've gotten accustomed to it you know where to buy your groceries you've unless maybe your status is going to change for example now where i used to live before i don't think they had very good schools and that's something to also put in mind if you're buying a house i'm assuming this is 
maybe you're going to live there for a, a, a good decent amount of time and also depending on your situation i was coming from the point of i'm a single girl and um i don't have kids or any of those things but i would encourage you to think further ahead especially if you're not planning to buy another house in the nearest foreseeable future okay okay so we started looking for a place around where we lived guys places were just funny there was this house that we went to my guy if you see this house this house obi told me he was like essie don't have high expectations when you go to this house this house is a fixer upper and again i'm not against fixer uppers right so we went to see this house guys this house was literally about to collapse like the floors were creaking and all of that and because of that this house was going for i think 250k which is not bad actually went there with like a build building guy like so we got someone that does like fixer uppers and renos to actually go along with us for this viewing and sort of give us a rough estimate of how much we're going to spend if we were to fix this up this was actually a two bed in my opinion that's like a one and a half bed this particular place that we saw because the second room literally was like a corridor the toilet there was mold there, i was just like when i saw it i was just shaking my head i was just like looking at obi giving him side eye i was like bro hmm the kitchen the array the layout was just off it was off as in uh, no guys i just i know no no <laughs> so essentially this um guy that went with us just basically told us that you were not going to be spending anything less than 50k and trust me i've watched a, a lot of home reno um shows and i followed lydia dinga's process trust me you're gonna spend way more than that 50k that they quoted for you because there might just be some unexpected things and the fact that there was mold in the bathroom i was like there's going to be issues with plumbing so definitely if you're someone who's looking to get like a fixer upper if you have the budget for it then go for it but just know that fixer uppers actually take time and that was something that i didn't have the luxury of okay my landlord was giving me two three months i wasn't sure that they were going to finish doing this fixing and you know demo reno thing in three months and that's if we were closed okay now buying a house in the uk is not something like it's not like in me i was thinking it works like nigeria right because i came from nigeria or i come from nigeria where you see a house you like you're interested you pay your money you move in like the process is pretty straightforward but here there's a lot that goes into the process so when we went back we're just like okay let's think this thing through okay let's actually think this thing through what do we want okay that's so we're like okay you know what Let, how about we add money i bring my own share of the deposit and he brings his own share of the deposit we, we increase our budget and uh, we increase how much we can actually get from the bank so the rule of thumb that we always use or that i would give you to use when you want to figure out if you have enough money to rent or figure out the limit to what you can buy like your range is multiply your salary or your combined income by a minimum of four and a maximum of five now what this means is this is how much the bank is going to be willing to lend you as mortgage now as an immigrant this is where the whole immigration thing now raises ugly head you don't have access to a lot of bank offers and now i'm going to just asterisk this here and say as at the time when we were searching and this was um 2021 that's when we actually started this process of searching for a house only barclays <laughs> i repeat only barclays was willing to give us a mortgage okay so all of those things sort of played into it because both myself and obi we don't have ilrs right so we're both on work visas so we decided okay 
let first things first let's get a broker we got our broker he was able to you know go through these different options with us i'm not going to go into all of that detail now but if you're if this is something you're interested in let me know in the comment section below and i will actually ask obi to be a guest and we'll actually discuss this process because we went through it together so we started um searching for houses even outside london because we started thinking okay if london is on the high side and we're not seeing anything nice how about we go to reading reading is like a commuter location and so we just thought okay reading might be a good idea but neither of us have lived in reading before so we decided how about we go for an exploratory one week which i highly highly recommend like i said if you've never lived in a place before before buying buying is such it's almost like a i don't i don't want to use the word permanent um process but it kind of feels like a permanent process it's, it's such a big deal that you don't want to make a mistake it's not like a rental that okay after six months you can move out so we put in an offer for this house this was like our official first house that we're putting an offer on and we were very excited it was a new build it was actually a flat but we didn't mind it like it was stunning guys it was clean and this house was going for 275k which meant we didn't need the we didn't need the help to buy to get this one i think it was two bed and a nice bath and warm bath and we just were like this is the one and then the whole process started okay so one of the steps essentially is that the bank is going to go and survey the house they're gonna go and check the house out so before they loan you any money they need to know that the house has value okay the house is not gonna collapse tomorrow and they've just loaned you this money so they did go for the survey and after the survey they came back to us and then they told us sorry guys we can't give you this money this house is what zero <laughs> just like what <laughs> how where what's going on and they essentially told us that this house had cladding so cladding is a material that is very susceptible to um fire and so houses with cladding banks don't want to go there <laughs> okay just like okay if this is this i think this is time for it's time for us to pull the plug on this house which was the first pain that we received because me in my head i started decorating that house <laughs> and then we went to visit our friends and they were also looking for a property as well and they were like oh they found this really nice place unfortunately they're not going to take it because the place doesn't have parking and the um garden is like literally a patio like it's so small and she showed me the video and me and obi looked at ourselves we're like oh my god this is the house like what our friends told us was like i think there were two or three houses available and the agent told them that was the last one that that people had were showing lot of interest so we wanted to move quickly we called the agent and we arranged it immediately she was like okay how about you come tomorrow evening to see the house and we we're like okay great we went to the house oh my god guys this house is the this house was the dream i'm not even joking it was tastefully furnished there was a bathroom on every floor it was just guys it was the dream i'm not even kidding you now downside to this house because see these things eh you can see the most beautiful house but everything around this is just rubbish first of all the area was looking a little bit dodgy um <laughs> the the air was looking like mm, i was like hmm. however me and obi seeing as two of us have coconut head and we were just so in love with the interior of this house and how clean and properly staged it was we decided that we we're gonna go ahead we slept on it we woke up the next morning we we're like are you still interested they're like yeah 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 let's do it let's do it we put in our offer guys the lady then came back to us and told us that she's sorry that the house we want is gone so we thought let me just say that there were actually two more two three houses still available 
but the one we wanted was the one at the end of the terrace just because we wanted better light like if you're in between a terrace building if you are the one sandwiched in between you have limited lights because they can't put windows on the sides okay your windows are going to be front and back depending on the orientation of the house and so we were avoiding that we wanted to be at the end that one had a bigger patio and you had that house had more light she then told us that oh sorry somebody came before us uh i'm putting an offer on that one that will get the sandwich to one and we're like no ma'am no we had first dibs you told us someone was gonna come and see it the next morning that was why we did the viewing the night before and we told you that that's the one that we were gonna go for we we shook on it there was trust and all of that she apologized to the high heavens she was like oh there's no difference we're like hello light is a huge difference please light in the house is it makes a whole world of difference and she's like oh there's nothing she can do she has already given it to them they sent in their offer earlier i was like you should have no 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 you don't do that she's like okay there's a house that the same developer is building but that one isn't as complete or hasn't gotten to the stage that these ones are these ones were almost ready to move in they were still building but certain blocks were finished and you could move into it right she's like this other one they are still building so it might take a while okay and she can show us like the cgi images the plan blah 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 first just get a sense of what this one looks like that this one she's proposing is not four bed however it's a three bed terraced house but it's it has a um larger square footage and all and we're like okay is it the same price she's like yes yeah, same price 600k in an even better area so we're like okay cool let's see so we googled the area we looked it we after church one sunday i was like obi let's go and see what this area actually looks like it's quite green quiet suburban i was like okay i'm not mad at this i'm like okay you know what let's start the process we get our broker involved we get our solicitors we start again as you're gonna start putting furniture where the, <laughs> in a house that she hasn't seen in hindsight i will not i repeat i will not do that again guys let me tell you something do not trust the words of an agent or a developer or a builder because these people will say anything i repeat they will say anything to make a sale we hadn't seen this house first of all we should have known that this agent had spiritual problems because the first house she already did us dirty and we still allowed her sweet talk us into you know putting in an offer for a house that they had not even started guys <laughs> she told us oh don't worry they're building very fast this house is going to be done in four months so what we did was we actually bought all of the furniture yes, the fact that we are putting an offer sort of gave me some confidence we have gotten the lawyers involved we we're signing documents sending this sending that and so because of that when we were moving my landlord then at the rental was like hey essay do you want to buy all of my furniture because i need to clear it out for the new person to come in since you're also buying because i already disclosed to her that we're buying i was like yeah why not guys that's how i carried load though load that was not my load i carried it on my head i bought every single furniture in hindsight if this had worked out the way we had envisaged right this wouldn't have been a bad thing because all the furniture we bought then i think it was like she she said we could take everything for 400 pounds and i was like that's such a steal and even though i hadn't seen the new place and i didn't know if all of her furniture would like fit in nicely i thought it was smart to just have furniture for the meantime whilst we kind of figure out our style and what we want for the space without that pressure of okay we moved into a new place there's nothing where are we sleeping we're sleeping on the floor closer to the four months winding down we called the agent we're like okay what's happening um and she's like yeah they're working on it 
there's just been some delays we don't think the house is gonna be ready for um end of july like as planned it's gonna be august september i was like mm -mm 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 -mm. sis don't do that let me know when is this house going to be ready she said i can't say it's august or september i was like you know what september and that's what i told myself i said this thing is gonna be september she was like no they are really trying their best they are working very fast they're gonna i said okay so that gave us like rest of mind next thing the agent then calls us she's like okay we've come to the time where you guys need to sign like the final contract and then we're gonna like it's gonna be officially legal that the property is yours so all this while it wasn't we hadn't signed that final contract right and then on this contract it's supposed to say the handover date the date that you're gonna move in so if the landlord or the builder defaults then they are they basically breached the contract she sends us this document we then see where they write that and now this is me paraphrasing i don't have the exact term they used but they were basically saying that the moving date is whenever the building is completed so they were they were they didn't want to tie themselves down to a specific date and i was like what when we saw it and again i have to tell you when you're going through this process read 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 everything guys read everything just because you have lawyers doesn't mean you shouldn't read read every fine print and that was why we're able to see this right and then we saw it and when we called them back we we're like this doesn't make sense how can you just you you basically made us almost homeless for the last six to seven months okay you can now tell us we would move in when the house is ready the house can be ready in the next two years three years okay it doesn't make sense she was like oh yeah there's nothing she can do blah 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 blah. and we start talking to these agents we're like first of all when you were selling us this house you told us this house the very first time you told us this house to be ready in april april came no house you told us oh they need more time july july or almost at the end you told us august now you told us september in my head at this point i already told obi we're moving into this house december it was very frustrating i'm not gonna lie because the short let's where we were we only had it up until the end of september and it was just too uncomfortable to go through that process looking for another place again moving our stuff mind you we were paying for storage for all of our stuff so just imagine the vent the annoyance that we used to speak to this lady we were so pissed she starts exchanging words with us guys can you imagine she's like well we didn't promise you anything you knew this house wasn't built blah 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 we just told her you you know what ma'am very good she, she, do you know what she even told us? She said, we didn't tell you guys to move out of your rental. I was like, no, you did not. But you told us with confidence that this house was going to be ready in April. And we told you that this is our situation. We had to move out because what this is what our landlord had said to us. She was like, yeah, but we didn't make any promises. There was no handwritten documents that was signed. And I was like, very good. You know what? We've been on this journey to see this special house that we hadn't seen in a while how about you show us the damn house let's see we want to actually come to the site and see what has been done she said oh, okay they'll try and arrange something guys we started pressurizing these people we're like are you sure we're not even getting ourselves into something that we we don't even like like let's actually go and see the house plus if they are still building the house if there are certain things we don't like now is a good time to just tell the builder to make some changes so that we get a home that we love after much neck pressing and disturbing they finally gave us a date for us to go and see the house guys when we went there this place they haven't i feel like they rushed it the structure had been built like the outer part had been built but the inner part they were still building it but i think that now gave us that renewed our confidence a bit we got we were so excited guys i don't even i can't even 
explain how happy we were i started envisaging a game where i'm gonna put my sofa my chandelier and all of that ah, guys that house visit just made every anger we felt every disappointment we felt everything just basically it disappeared in that moment when we actually saw the house it wasn't finished we took pictures in front of it we went guys oh i was happy that whole entire day i was i just kept attending oh my god this room this is what this room is gonna be this is what this room is gonna be uh, guys remember that when we initially put in an offer for this house this house was due to be completed or complete in April, which meant we were meant to have finished all the documentative process by April. And because they kept pushing the dates and basically our lawyers were also very, I don't want to say they were lazy, but they weren't exactly fast or following up as quickly as possible. A few weeks later, um, we're like they call us up they're like okay i mean our lawyers call us and they're like it's time to close out this thing you guys you have literally i think we had like a week or two days i can't remember but we had like a very short time to sign the final legal documents hand it over and that's like the official exchange of contract and then for us to be like legally in contract with the house like the house is now our house like nobody's gonna tell us anything um again i wanted us to do due diligence once they gave us the contract we read through it we were happy with it we signed it we sent it over to our lawyers and then i don't know i think it was like a week after or a few days i don't really remember the timeline we both then get an email i was at work and i got this email that says sorry the um developer has decided to withdraw from this um, exchange blah 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 see let me tell you something once i saw withdraw i just saw red <laughs> hey guys this is almost a year of our life i don't want to say wasted but see i don't even know <laughs> i i just cannot i just cannot guys the developer basically told us they were no longer interested in doing business with us that we had missed the deadline to exchange contracts that the initial date for us to exchange contract was in april and we were just exchanging it now in october guys can you see that these people are mad <laughs> the same people that we've been signing several documents we've been doing all these document exchange the house wasn't even ready in april like there was just it, it was just a cop out like we knew it was a cop out because i feel the moment they encountered this water problem and they calculated how much they needed to fix it they just wanted to up the price of the house and them upping the price of the house meant the house wasn't going to be on help to buy again and we were buying with help to buy and so they just found a legal way to kick us out of it without no remorse without i i, I just feel like that was the most wicked thing anybody has done to me or done to us in this case um immediately we called our lawyers we we're like what what is this and she then says like she that this is a lie this doesn't make sense they've been in communication with the developers lawyers this this they were the ones that you know give them like give them the timeline told told them that oh this is the date for us to exchange and that's why they came back to us a few weeks ago saying we need to sign it in the next two days which we did we sent it they said official there was even like uh an email trail where we sent it to we had where the our lawyers had transferred it to their lawyers the contract and they said we should pause yes i remember they said they want before they accept or exchange any contract they needed to solve this water issue first yes that was it that was why we called and we're like oh what's happening and they said oh they're having water 
or plumbing issues or something like that they had to stop the construction they are working on it blah 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 and that once that is solved we can go ahead with the exchange <laughs> and now one week later you are telling me we missed the deadline which deadline did we miss guys it was crazy i was on the i i was numb i was numb i just didn't know what to do in that moment i was just so pained i was like who do i call who's gonna fight this battle for me because this is ridiculous at the same time legally speaking the fact that we had not exchanged contracts meant that there was no contract we didn't have a case guys there was nothing we could do there was really nothing we could do which we were just we were just defeat we felt so defeated um the plan was to get married move into our new house and now we didn't have that um and because we had started this process this is 2022 right that this whole thing happened we have been on this journey since 2021 we just told ourselves you know what <laughs> let, let us rest <laughs> because with the disappointment this was the third disappointment guys this is the third time and it was just back to back to back to back so we just decided you know what um we've learned our lesson our lawyers also messed up and um, if the document or the contract or whatever said april was the deadline they should have requested for an extension and that should have been legally documented and all of that so that we we have a case because these people they had seen the loophole apparently it's a normal thing that when there's a deadline for this exchange of contracts most times nobody what i heard now I'm, and this is no fact sometimes they don't respect that deadline they still do the exchange even though the deadlines passed sometimes but these people just decided that that was gonna be their loophole for them to just basically push us out of the sale and end up they what they ended up doing was they put this property back on the market and raised it raised it by another 100k guys this was coinciding with the time when inflation hit the rental markets was going crazy the housing market was going crazy mortgage rates was out of this so for us i just at that point it was so overwhelming with the pricing the mortgage the F <laughs> so my dears that's how we lost out on the house so and we just decided you know what it's not the end of the world but we do need a break <laughs> let's just rent a house and now i'm really glad that we went through the process because we have learned a lot through it we know what we want what we don't like now that we're renting um it also has given me the opportunity to hone in on my home decor skills and just really know what we want from a house for so yeah guys this is the end of the story i hope you found it very interesting and also enlightening like i said make sure if you're planning to buy a house that you start mentally preparing for it if it's saving reading up about the different schemes that you can use to buy if you're an immigrant the road is not closed until you get your ilr you can definitely get some banks to give you a mortgage that might just be one bank but i think now is a better time than tomorrow okay don't procrastinate on buying a house and if you cannot buy a house there is nothing wrong in renting um i found that renting this house is quite i actually like it and we're still saving up to buy something um we will buy something eventually but i'm not gonna despise renting okay it's, it's part of the process and on to my next one bye